of my very first Match.com dates was with uh, a really nice uh, George Clooney lookalike. The date was going so well, we were at the bar, it was going so well, uh, we decided to stay there and have dinner. So we got in and was staring at the menu inches from his face. Being the jerk that I am, I said, it's not a scratch and sniff, you know. <laughs> he said, yeah, I know, I'm legally blind. <laughs> Didn't mention that detail in his profile. <laughs> well, I mean, now I explain the dog. <laughs> I guess you didn't see that box. <laughs> you didn't get to see mine. I
out of there unattached and available and taking an aspirin a day. <laughs> I'm in. If you're not on Coumadin or Lipitor, don't approach me. <laughs> if you don't have to prick your finger to check your blood sugar or something else, better watch your number. If you don't consider insure a mixer, <laughs> it ain't never gonna happen. Because there is nothing sexier than getting the AARP discount <laughs> when you're having dinner at 4 p.m. <laughs> Been at the other end of the bar for best you call me in a while. Not exactly the type to show all of his cards, but I think I just spotted a smile. Well, now I fully intend to find that one man to spend all my ever actors with. But I've been looking so long, and it's over.
gallbladder surgery while we were home for Christmas. <laughs> Why are we laughing? <laughs> we're all going to hell. <laughs> so, and then I, and because I'm, you know, a singer and I do that thing that singers do, I, I had a gig, so I left. <laughs> and I left him there with my parents to recover. <laughs> and I thought, well, sink or swim, pal, sink or swim. <laughs> They're either going to love him or I'm going to file paper. So anyway, I I left on a, on a cruise ship gig and uh, Marcia, my mother, the former nurse, took care of Lee and helped him recover from gallbladder surgery. And I thought as I was boarding the plane, there's nothing like a sponge bath to bring people together. <laughs> but the best part was, I can't believe I'm going to tell you this, I called her home one day and I said, how is he doing? How is he doing? She goes, well, he's doing well. He's having a regular diet. And I did ask him today because the doctor asked me to. I said, have you pooped? <laughs> and what color is it? <laughs> because if it's plain color, we have a problem. <laughs> I thought, wow, this is happening. This is happening. Now we've shared. We've really shared. <laughs> You know, and, and this is a this is a terrible thing to say too, but he's not really what I pictured in my mind. My Prince Charming would look like. Isn't that always the way too? Um, he sort of looks like. Don't you dare tweet or Facebook this. Don't you do it. He sort of looks like a grown-up version of Ron Weasley from the Harry Potter books. <laughs> the Harry Potter movies. He's so cute though. He's not perfect, but he's perfect for me. And folks, I'm just so glad I finally met someone I can stand. <laughs> Circus is love. Mm -hmm. Circus is love. So this is what makes life divine. I'm all alone. And now I know. <laughs> it was uh, Carol Burnett's autobiographical piece that she wrote with her daughter. So, written by Carol Burnett, starring Linda Loudon, directed by Hal Prince. It was going to run for years, right? right? Too long. <laughs> and uh, the girl that I was covering never got sick, and I just didn't feel it was an appropriate thing to pull a Tanya Harding and take her kneecaps off. So, uh, so I never got to go on. 
But for years, my dream was to play Belle, as in Beauty and the Beast, the Broadway musical. Yeah, there is nothing I wanted more than to don that yellow gown and turn Chewbacca into a gorgeous gay chorus boy with a ponytail. <laughs> So when I was in New York, I made it my mission to book Bell on Broadway. When I wasn't hounding casting, I was honing my Bell. There's something sweet and almost kind, but he was mean and he was coarse and unrefined. But now he's dear and so I'm sure. I wonder why I didn't see it there before. Thank you. <laughs> a former Musketeer playing Bell. Missing a boat. So when casting refused to return my phone calls, I decided to uh, show up at the Equity Principal auditions in Wawang. I uh, I waited in line for three hours in the cold, waiting for my chance to sing Candor and Ebbs, all that jazz, <coughs> which at the time I deemed an appropriate selection because Bill obviously has the same struggles as Bill McKelly. <laughs> <laughs> now, do we have the actors in the room? Actors? Okay, so for, for those of you, and, and for those of you who have not been to the Equity Building in New York, they have these giant rehearsal and audition rooms, and you line up outside the door, and you can hear every note the person ahead of you is singing, which is very diarrhea <laughs> And I remember feeling a huge sense of relief when the girl ahead of me did not sing all that jazz. In fact, none of them did. <laughs> and I thought, what luck! <laughs> it's the perfect choice. Man, I got this. <laughs> so the door opened, my sphincter tightened. <laughs> the girl ahead of me came out. She had a horrified look on her face, and she said, good luck in there. Well, I didn't know what to make of that, but we all know that musical theater people are all about the Jedi mind tricks. And I wasn't having it. I bounded into the room, right past the casting director, went over to the accompanist, laid out my chart, snapped out my tempo, <laughs> showed him my cut somewhere his eyes are still rolling. <laughs> he said, I'm familiar with this piece. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was great, actually. <laughs> freshly pressed skirt from the missus. <laughs> and I looked up to see the casting director breastfeeding <laughs> her two-year-old child. <laughs> well, I don't know if it was hers, but <laughs> I do know it was two. And I know this because he was wearing those shoes that light up, and they don't make light-up shoes for infants. <laughs> and if he's old enough to light up shoes, he's old enough to say, hey, Ma, can I get a tug? <laughs> <laughs> the kid was so <laughs> So she said, Phil, Lindsay, how are you? And then this is perfectly normal. I said, I too have a campaign for my breast. <laughs> she said, what are you singing for us today? <laughs> we had, I, I, I couldn't respond. I couldn't focus on anything except the National Geographic scene going on. <laughs> <laughs> The intro started, I sang, I think. Uh, my performance was underwhelming at best. I didn't even get to the best part, you know, the, um, oh, no, what's why part before she cut me off. But thank you! I walked to the accompanist, I got my music, I hurried to the door. And just as I got to the door, she said, well, wait, I see here you were a musketeer. And I thought, <laughs> I said, yes, yes, I was. She said, so, you still see Brittany and Justin? <laughs> no, no, I don't see Brittany or Justin. She said, oh, well, thanks for coming in. Folks, I never did get to play Belle or any Disney princess on the Broadway. Aww. This is where you grew but that's why God made cabaret acts <laughs> and vodka. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. 
since no one here seems to be breastfeeding, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and finish the song, if that's okay with you guys. shaving your head or popping out of a car without your knickers. <laughs> As a grown-up, I've come to realize that it's not the number of followers you have on the Twitter, but um, the people in your life who you can really count on. You know, the people who <laughs> tell you when you're being a jackass. <laughs> Thank God for Paul and Marcia, my parents, who have really... Um, I don't want to get emotional this early in the evening. Just on the verge of starting my period. So. I'll try to get my sphincter. But 
They're an amazing couple. They've been married for 47 years. Oh. Now, I, I don't want to make it sound all skipping unicorns. So, I don't know what that was. Sometimes I'll, sometimes I'll call home and my mother will say something like, Sweet Jesus. He is driving me slap ass crazy. I had to take to the closet. <laughs> Are you really in the closet? Yes. <laughs> he is making the red hair on my fanny stand on end. <laughs> An image I personally find very upsetting. <laughs> but at the end of the day, my parents are best friends. They're pals, they're sweethearts. Let's talk about solid foundations and role models. When you wish upon a star, makes no difference who you are. Anything your heart desires will come.
So, you, you guys, here, here we are at the end of the show. Aww. Oh gosh, I owe so many people money tonight. <laughs> Checks at the door. Um, but I have to, I have to thank a lot of people because it takes a lot of people to put a one-woman show together. First and foremost, I want to thank Steve Clark and Jeff Kilty of the Alan Shiro Arts and Culture. I'm so, I'm so grateful that they let me come here and do this skit. Uh, a huge thank you to Carrie in the back who's done these beautiful lights. And a big thank you to Charlie back there for not only being hot, but for making the <laughs> microphone work. Thank you so much. And Jimmy, who's equally as hot, so thank you for the water. <laughs> We have to thank our adorable Mouseketeers. Give it up for those kids. We have a little group therapy in the dressing room tonight. I said think positively and double major. <laughs> uh, I need to also thank David. I don't need to. I want to thank David Sexton, who um, came to me with this title and this idea for this show. And I said, are you sure people are going to want to he said, no, 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 we should definitely write this. And he sat with me for hours and hours and hours and toiled and we cried. And it was a whole, you know, Oprah episode. <laughs> um, so, David, thank you so much. And, <laughs> and finally, to my, um, my wingman, who's up here, um, Rick Leonard, who uh, I just adore. Not only is he a brilliant musician, he's also my dear friend. So it's uh, a blessing to be able to share the stage with him. And um, I'm going to tell you one more Disney story before I go. Oh, I'm slipping, I'm slipping. Um, back in Mouse Club days, I was about 15, I guess, the producers of the show sent me to interview Annette Funicello, Barbara Walters style. And she had just been diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And she wasn't really doing any interviews at the time, uh, but she agreed to do this one, and it was really touching and nice. And at the end of the interview, she said, um, no matter where you go or what you do with your career, <laughs> you'll always be a musketeer. <laughs> and um, she said, don't ever forget it, and remember that it's an honor. And I think about that a lot because throughout your career, you think, I don't want to talk about that anymore. And now it, I, I see that it's an honor, and I, I don't want to escape my past. It's definitely part of who I am. You know, the ears and, and the nose. Um, life. And instead of focusing now on who I was or where I want to be, I'm realizing that my happily ever after is happening right now. <laughs> it's the ugly cry. <laughs> you know the one I wish I could be for your face. <laughs> I have often dreamed of a far off place where a great warm welcome would be waiting for me. And the crowds would cheer when they see my face. And a voice keeps saying, This is where I'm meant to 